Hello, welcome to RC Video Reviews. Today I'm going to show you a really cool wireless trainer setup. Before we get started, I need to let you know this video is sponsored by Radio Master, who sent me this WT01 wireless dongle for review. I got to thank Radio Master a lot because obviously they're keeping me well equipped with radios. But the important thing in all, all this is I get a chance to show you guys how to do some really cool things. This dongle, super easy to use. I'll show you how to bind it really quick. And I'm going to show you how to do a trainer setup, but I'm not going to stop with the basic trainer setup. I'm going to show you a very simple quick take back option that lets you have your student run the student radio, which is here on the left. The, the trainer runs the master radio, which is here on the right. And the student is happy to fly. You can see I've got control on this radio right here. I'm moving my sticks around. Students out there flying around having a good time. But if the master sees something he doesn't like or the trainer sees something he doesn't like, he can instantly take control of the radio and it overrides what the student is doing. So you can see on the aileron side, I'm moving my aileron on the student radio. I've got outputs going, but you can see the output for the aileron is doing what the trainer radio is, is doing only. Now, if I let go of this stick, we go right back to student mode and the student has control again. I'm gonna show you how to set all this up and bind to that WT01. All right, let's jump into the content. The first thing you'll want to do is charge up your WT01. Notice there's a little USB-C port right there. You just plug that into any charging device you have and it'll charge up the little battery that's inside the WT01. To power it on, you press and hold this power button. And once it gets to the four lights, you let it go. And you'll see the two lights here indicate I have about half of my battery left. So there's four lights. Each light represents 25% of your battery power. Now to get it into binding mode, I'm gonna turn it back off again. Just press and hold the button until the lights go away. And we're going to press and hold the button until the lights start to flash. And once that happens, we're going to go to our student radio, which is this one, and we're going to go into bind mode. So I'm going to press model. I'm just going to scroll down. And the protocol you want to use is FreeSky D18. There are others you can use, but I don't see any reason not to use this FreeSky D18. So we'll just go down to bind and click on that. And what will happen is you'll see a rapid flash right there. That means you've bound successfully. Once that's completed, you can do a, a short press on this device and that's it. We're now bound. So now we have full control and you can see my configuration is kind of showing you we've got control on the, on the trainer radio. Okay, let's go through the rules real quick on the trainer radio. There, I set up a couple of logic switches and a couple of logic controls so that the trainer can take over. And I wanna walk you guys through what is going to happen with this little configuration. Student radio, trainer radio. In my case, I'm using a helicopter. This can be done with anything. It can be done with fixed wing. It can be done with helicopters, quads, it doesn't matter. This is a fairly complex configuration on these. So I figured I'd use this to just show you how easy it is. One other thing I wanna point out too, in terms of the housekeeping, is that I use the same exact model config on both. I put the same model config on this radio and this radio. The big difference is this one is bound to the WT01 wireless dongle. And this one will be bound to the aircraft in flight, okay? Hope flat makes sense. So the flow of control goes from these sticks over the wireless to the dongle, into this radio, out the internal module, out this antenna to the aircraft in flight, okay? Hopefully that makes sense to you. In order to, for the student to take control, the instructor has to push SG away. And when that is done, the student now has control of the craft. So you notice I'm moving my rudder here. Here is my pitch. Also, I want to pay attention. I want you to pay attention to the pitch curve. Notice that I'm all the way down on this stick and this pitch curve over here is only going down to about negative 20. That's my normal mode pitch curve. That prevents me from having full negative pitch and it basically shuts the motor off. So as I move this stick up, I go all the way up into a full, uh, the full throw for positive pitch. Now, if I take my idle up switch and go into idle up one, let me move my stick down here. So I'm gonna go back down to the bottom. You see how I'm stopped right there at about negative 20. Now I'm gonna go into idle up one and watch what happens to my pitch. See how it jumped over like that? That's idle up one. I have full negative pitch now. And I wanted to point that out because all of the channels translate into the master radio, okay? When you're using the setup that I'm using. So we've got full pitch, we've got full rudder, we have full elevator, and we have full aileron. Now, 
if the instructor, all the instructor has to do is have the SG switch away and his sticks in the center position. And we'll talk a little bit about the range because this is an unsprung stick. But since these are sprung sticks, I have it set up so all the instructor has to do is not touch the stick. But if the instructor sees something he doesn't like, then all he's got to do is take control. So once he takes control, that's it. You can see that I've got control of the outputs right here and the student radio, even if the student goes full right aileron and the instructor says, nope, we need to go left, there it is. The instructor's now got full left aileron. Doesn't matter what the student does over here, the instructor's the one in, in control. Same thing with elevator. If the student has full forward elevator and the instructor says, nope, we need full back elevator, you see what happens on the output, right? I'm gonna further show you the proof on this by putting in the channel monitor and we'll do it again. You'll see aileron going to the right and you can see the output right here. Aileron is going uh, this way. It's going to the left, but that's because it's reversed on this radio, on the master radio, okay? So it's going the right way. Now, if the instructor says, nope, that's not what I wanna see. I wanna see left aileron. Look what happens to the output. You see that gray bar going off to the right now? That's override. The instructor has control. And as soon as the instructor lets go, it goes back to control on the student radio immediately, okay? Same thing with elevator. Let's do an elevator movement. You'll see the elevator line going off to the right. So I'm pulling back or pitching back on the elevator stick on the student radio. If the instructor says, nope, that's a little too much, they can take over and push forward just a little bit. Okay, so there's an instant override and it works on every single channel. That's the genius of this setup. I really like it. I, I think it's very cool and I can't wait to try it with Freddy, with my helicopter and with his fixed wing. I think we're gonna have a great time. All right, let me show you the logic. I think we're done with the student radio. I'm gonna set that aside. That's all you really need to see. It's just a configuration on this radio. You don't have to do anything special with it. Just bind it to this thing. That's all you've got to do. This thing doesn't know it's not controlling an airplane. So it's a normal helicopter configuration that's bound to this receiver. That's all you have to do on this radio. All right, now let's take a look at the master radio and get into the logic. All right, the first thing I wanna point out is I have audio prompts and we have a couple little, little logic lines, but don't let this intimidate you. It's actually really simple to understand. All this says is on L05, L06, L07, and L08, if my aileron, elevator, pitch control, or rudder are changed and they deviate from center, this means the absolute value of A is greater than X. So if there's a deviation on the aileron control of more than two points, the logic five takes over and activates, okay? So if I move my aileron to the left, only two points, we see L5 go on. If I move it to the right two points, it goes on as well. Here's the elevator. If I move down two points, it goes on. If I go up two points, this is the override point part. So if the instructor says, I see something I don't like and they take over, all they need is that little bit of movement on the stick and they've got control. They've got control. Pitch is over here on this side. Now, notice that I used a value of eight. The reason I did that is because this one is unsprung. So if you're an instructor flying this one, you get a little bit more latitude to find center and give it back to the student. All you have to do to give it back to the student is get it in that center spot real close and let go and then L07 goes off. But as soon as you take over and add just a little bit of pitch, it activates and you've got control of the craft. Same thing with rudder. We'll put the pitch right back in the middle. Same thing with rudder. If I move that rudder stick just two notches, just two little movements, that's it. The instructor has control after that. Now, if you find you're having a hard time getting center, you can always add a little bit more to that. Just remember, if you're an instructor, you might have to give it a little bit more pitch, a little bit down pitch, you know, fly it back going up and down if you want to, who cares? You can fly it, you know, that's not gonna be a problem for you. Um, but if you do wanna give it a little bit more dead band in the middle, simply increase that value from eight to something a little bit higher. Okay, regarding L09, L10, and 11, all this is doing is filtering everything down into a single logical switch. So notice what L09 does, it says, hey, if L05 or L06 are active, I want you to light. L05 and six are responsible for the right stick. So anytime L05 or six are moved, L09 goes on. Same thing happens with the left stick. Anytime the rudder or pitch is moved, L10 goes on. That's all that's going on here is we're now filtering these four controls down into two switches. And the very last thing what we're doing is taking those two switches, L9 and L10 right here, 
and we're saying if either one of those are active i want you to go on all that the, effectively all that does is say anytime any of these sticks are moved we want l11 to be on that's all that's going on here the last thing that we do is we combine that l11 with a switch sg forward and a delay now the reason i do the delay is because if you don't have a delay when you pass through center you'll find the thing toggling itself on and off too fast so if you if you don't have that delay built in what will happen is every time you pass through center it'll light and you'll say trainer on trainer off trainer on trainer off by adding the delay we avoid that as we pass through center the computer's kind of quick so if you don't have a delay built in you will toggle that that switch on and off now all this does it says look sg has to be away sg has to be away and we have to not be in logical 11 so that means none of these other conditions can be true and sg is away if that's true l16 is lit and l16 is our trainer enable switch that's that simple the next thing we'll do is take a look at the special functions for sf10 remember l16 is the one that enables or is active when i want the trainer mode to be enabled if i pull my sg switch to me that goes away if I move any of my sticks, that goes away. So SF10 is that special function that enables trainer channels. Just make sure you put a little checkbox right there. That's all you've got to do. Now, the last bit of this configuration is a little bit of audio prompt so you know what's going on. I have SF12 enabled when L16 goes on. We play the track trainer on, and we do that one, one time only, not during startup. That's what the exclamation is. SF13 is when L16 is off, that means the trainer mode is off. Play the track one time, not during startup. So I'll turn the volume up so you can hear it. And all I'm gonna do is I'll move my G switch, which will turn trainer mode off. Trainer. So it says trainer off, now trainer on. Trainer. Now the student has control unless I move the stick. If I move the stick, trainer, trainer off. I let go of the stick, trainer, trainer on. There we go, guys. You just saw a really cool quick take back option for Edge TX using the Radio Master WT01 wireless dongle. I hope you like this kind of content. If you do, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. Thanks a lot to Radio Master for sending this wireless dongle out. It's exactly what I needed to help with my helicopter training and to help Freddie with some of the fixed wing training. So we're going to have a lot of fun with this. I hope you guys like the material. If you do, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. That's all I've got for today. Take it easy. Hey, if you like the work I do here on RC Video Reviews, please consider joining me on Patreon. For about the price of a cup of coffee, you can help me keep making videos just like this one. If you'd like to help out, there's a link in the description and on your screen.